If you're awakened as the literal weakest profession in a world full of godlike dragons, you're probably thinking that you're dead meat, right? Wrong. Because if you're anything like Lu Fun, you will defy the odds of your fate, receiving a unique treasure system to discover the likes of a legendary black dragon in order to become the most potent force in the dragon kingdom. Ready to find out how he transitions from his pathetic state to the path of the strong? Let's find out by diving right into his story. Welcome to a world where the elements of virtual gaming have actually merged with reality. There are newer professions, with people changing their professions to gain even more powerful abilities. There are also countless ruins and dungeons, with numerous mysterious realms of their own. Not to mention the demons. As in other stories, there are demonic and beastly monsters. Haha. <laughs> no story is complete without them. In exchange, the individuals can also obtain experience points, other materials, and even equipment to strengthen themselves by hunting these monsters. Even so, no matter the strength of these monsters, they all fall flat in comparison to the magnificent existence, a race of beasts more powerful than the likes of a deity, dragons. The story begins at one of the schools of the Dragon Kingdom, where the junior year section 25 is receiving its first awakening orientation. The professor calls for their attention and informs the students about the awakening ceremony, where many futures will be decided, as well as the abilities of the students in their exams. The result of these awakenings is randomly determined, meaning it's all luck-based and could allow for a combative profession with some determination. Yikes, this is just gacha and RNG all over again. The students of the class bicker around, but Lu Fun is more excited than ever. He's a person who was zapped into this strange world from a place called Blue Planet only three years ago. Lu Fun has gained an adequate understanding of this bizarre planet in those three years and reflects how there are many kinds of professions, each of which can be categorized into three main types. At the top of the hierarchy, there are combative professionals who include the likes of warriors, mages, archers, and many other classes. Wah! These guys look like buffed SS rank heroes. Such beings use potent abilities to explore unknown realms, obtain equipment, and receive numerous rewards. It is often the most preferred profession of them all. Second are the reinforcing professions which are flooded with the likes of enchanters, alchemists, and many different classes capable of creating special items with various effects. Still, they need money to practice their talents properly and without the hefty support of the wealthy family. A reinforcing professional will find himself incapable of fulfilling his potential. Oof, man, that sucks. The final category at the bottom of this power pyramid is the subsistence profession, which includes chefs, herbalists, miners, and other classes. These people are the future for the majority of the population and continue to make an honest living. They basically call us humans normies in a few dozen languages. In fact, Lu Fun's aunt, Hun Ki, is one of those types of chefs. She supports his education with her small steam bun shop, and although there is only an eight-year age difference, Hun Ki supports him without expecting anything in return. Lu Fun reflects his desire to prosper in this world by awakening as a combative professional. The class teacher excitedly announces that their awakening platform has been built. Meaning their ceremony is about to begin, his announcement is met by the applause of the students, who basically race headfirst to make their way to the platform. However, Lu Fun is sitting silent, and his teacher comes to his attention, wondering why he seems anxious despite being the top student in the section. Lu Fun isn't anxious because of the announcement, rather, he's in the middle of experiencing something extraordinary. He has just activated a super treasure map system and feels clueless as to how it happened. Lu Fun paces away from his teacher, contemplating the abilities of the system that he just acquired, and makes way to the career ceremony that he has longed for. The scene switches to the awakening platform, where the students bear witness to the awakening crystal. Lu Fun shoves his way through the crowd as the various students daydream about becoming combative professionals, even though they are the rarest in their school. The headmaster, a grand mage, calls forth the priest who will host the awakening ceremony. Lu Fun can feel the difference in the priest's aura as a combative professional. That's when he acquires the sudden skill called the Eye of Appraisal. He inspects the priest's data and realizes that his skill basically scans another person's abilities. Lu Fun is incredibly shocked that this man possesses 5 million dragon coins in his account. Bro is stunned to discover this man's bread. The Elder Sage summons forth the students for their awakening demonstration while Lu Fun confesses how his aunt would never be able to earn this much throughout her lifetime. Chichang Tao is the first student of the bunch and is considered one of the top students in their section. He graces the platform with his presence and gets the attention of all the students, who are confident that he will awaken as a combative professional. He's got all the rays. The priest channels his powers, and eventually, Zhang Tao manages to summon a fireball. The students wonder if he has just awakened as a pyromancer, 
who is a true combative professional. Jean Tao has tamed the flames with his confident stature and received prominent attention from the crowd, while Lu Fun wonders how he, too, can bid farewell to his miserable life by awakening as a combat professional. Yep, top 10 moments before a disaster. Many other students come forth and end up awakening as the ordinary class, ruining their expectations. Lu Fun realizes that the subsistence professions indeed take up the majority of the crew and reflects that awakening as a combat professional is the only way to open up boundless possibilities for the future, while the others live ordinary lives. Li Ping already had a struggling family and ended up awakening as a reinforcing professional who requires much money to nurture properly. If she had become a subsistence professional, Ping could have gained specialized skills for money. Lu Fun contemplates how his family is in the same boat, which would be miserable for him. He is finally called to get on the platform, with the rest of the students admiring his handsome looks. Lu Fun confidently rears before the awakening crystal while the priest performs the act to his shock. The stage is met with an earthquake, followed by the summoning of a legendary dragon. The students are in absolute awe that he has discovered a hidden profession, while his teacher wonders if he is going to awaken as the strongest hidden professional like the dragon blood warrior or the Dovatinvak mage. All of them have extraordinary expectations for Lu Fun when he receives a performative demonstration. The elder grabs Lu Fun and wonders if he has become either of the two legendary hidden professionals. Lu Fun, contrary to everyone's expectations, utters how he has just become a dragon tamer. Bro just fumbled his chat aura. The room falls silent as they cannot fathom how this grand spectacle is reduced to the most worthless profession known to their kind. Damn, the turns have officially tabled. After the awakening ceremony, Lu Fun returns to his old town in Jiyang High City. He inspects the system screen and finds his stats to be that of a dragon tamer. The scene reverts to a sequence from the ceremony, where, after his awakening, people call them mediocre as humans can never tame powerful creatures such as dragons. Some of the students had yet to learn why it was considered the weakest of the three hidden professions, but is really because dragons are a rare find, and the task of taming them is another problem. The elder wince and console Lu Fun advising him to tame second-rate sub-dragon species to become stronger. Lu Fun isn't optimistic about his future scope and wonders how a dragon tamer can even have boundless potential without any dragons around. The sub-dragon species are nothing but ferocious beasts in comparison, far too weak to the likes of the dragons. In the 800-year history of the Dragon Kingdom, while dragons have indeed appeared, a dragon tamer has actually been unheard of as a concept. No matter the strength of the humans, they are ants in comparison to the fire-breathing beasts of destruction. Hell yeah. Dragons are something else, man. Lu Fun finds himself in a low mood, thinking about the situation, and believes that he doesn't have any idea how he can unlock his skills. Lu Fun returns to his aunt's steamed bun shop and greets Hun Ki in kind, who has prepared delicious meals for her nephew. That's a W aunt right there. She immediately embraces him and wants to hear about the details of the day he always looked forward to. Hun Ki inquires about the kind of profession he acquired, but Lu Fun is just too embarrassed even to say anything. His aunt tells him not to worry, but Fun is insistent and explains that he became a mere dragon tamer and doesn't know how to do anything with it. Hun Ki shows a compassionate attitude to her nephew and tells him that his powers are a sign of strength in her own way. She expresses her open support for him, which brightens Fun's mood. Later, Fun plops on his bed in an exhaustive state, reflecting how his aunt is only 26 years old and works so hard to make a living in her profession. He's always wanted to live a better life with her and doesn't know how to climb to the top of his profession. Fun is frustrated to find himself a part of the hidden profession and is suddenly greeted by the system. The system has bestowed him with a divine level treasure map. And so he decides to inspect the ability. The treasure maps are classified into four categories, with the highest being the rank of divinity. Using the system, he can combine the three identical low-level maps into one high-level map. The system informs him that he'll receive a randomly graded treasure map every day and can find various treasures based on his profession by going to the location. He ponders how, by using this system, he can basically bridge the gap between the weakest and the strongest in his own way. Fun thinks that this treasure map is basically the final chance to turn the odds in his favor. He accepts the task of acquiring the treasure map and receives the location for the task. The treasure is apparently located at Mount Shi Basin, which isn't too far from his city. Fun is excited and wants to hurry to the task immediately. The next morning, Hun Ki wakes up to spot a note on the table. She wonders where Fun went and reads the note, which follows how he is journeying to the mountain for a few days. Fun wants to reclaim this final chance to change his fate, ensuring a good life for both of them. He stands tall before the outskirts of Mount Shi Basin, 
while the muscular giant and his duo immediately startle him. There are three goons right in front of them, making fun wonder if they are dungeon robbers. Ahaha. Who we'll called these clowns to the party? Fun thinks that this group must be stealing materials from the people and thinks that he's just a piece of meat for this vicious group. Fun's cover is blown, and they immediately begin suspecting him. Fun declines their invitation to tag along while one of them lectures him about the rules of the wilderness. Fun is cautious of the group and tells them that he's a summoner and can resolve issues by himself. Because of his abilities, they leave him alone, except the woman of the group bids him an affectionate farewell, stating that they will meet again someday. Fun reflects how these people are despicable even in the wilderness, as it is much safer to go without them. He wants to get it done quickly and checks for the location of the treasure. Fun ventures into the path and makes their way through the bushes, where he discovers a power horn horse, a formidable species that can become pretty problematic for someone with no skills. Bro is casually dissing himself left and right. Fun doesn't want to challenge this path and takes a detour for safety reasons. He still feels unsafe traversing through the giant horn antelopes and accidentally steps onto a frog, receiving the attention of the horn animals around him. Fun runs for his life after provoking the antelopes and manages to get away unharmed safely. Haha, <laughs> they nearly trash him. Fun winces how he can't even take down such beasts in his pitiful state and believes that he'll forever regret failing this opportunity. Fun manages to arrive at the designated treasure map location and becomes excited to discover the exact spot. He ends up finding the treasure, which could very well change his life as a dragon tamer. Fun discovers the legendary egg of a black dragon who is about to be born. Suddenly, he hears a sound from close by and wonders how everything has gone smoother than his expectations. He instantly attacks the bloodthirsty gray fox, who was secretly creeping up on him. Fun wrestles with the fox with his blade and flings the beast away. The system tells him about the details of his beastly opponent, who possesses numerous abilities. Fun is at a standstill and thinks that he doesn't have any skills to counter the fox, and while he is distracted, the fox manages to slash him using its claws. Fun wants to stall for as much time as possible and eventually times a successful shot, taking down the gray fox with his blade. There we go, the first dub of the day. With one trouble gone, now comes another. The group of three bandits from before chime in, and they seem to have been following Fun all the way through. They now know that he possesses no such abilities as a summoner, and instead choose to battle in physical combat against the fox. Fun tosses them the body of the beast, wanting to be left alone again. However, the leader thinks otherwise and tells Fun that they have their eyes set on something else, something far more valuable. Fun realizes that these guys are in serious trouble. The group attacks him at once, with the giant punching him with a powerful strike as he falls to the ground. Then, he is locked in place and held with a blade on his throat. Fun can't do anything in this situation as the dungeon robbers make their way to collect their treasures. Man, these guys are so annoying. The muscle head brings over the dragon egg, while Fun is about to meet his doom. Fun knows that it's his only chance to turn the tables, and precisely at that moment, the egg bursts open to give weight to the daunting Waco monster. The dragon quickly zooms in, dodging their attacks and channeling a deathly roar, which instantly kills one of the men. The eye patched leader is begging for help while Fun is at a loss for words. He is shocked to see how strong a baby dragon's abilities are. The dragon quickly devours their leader, while Fun capitalizes on this moment to get away from the frantic woman. Fun casts his dragon taming technique at last, influencing the dragon with his unique powers while the woman remains shocked. Fun reintroduces himself after successfully taming the dragon and states that he should only exact justice for the dungeon robber's actions. With that, the dragon finishes off the final dungeon bandit and brings an end to their battle. Fun and his newly acquired companion are safe and sound, and he is already dreaming of accomplishing his goal of penetrating the gap of power. Fun has good wishes for the dragon and thinks that the title of the dragon tamer will no longer be deemed the weakest. He wonders what he should name this little apocalyptic beast. Ah yes, he's casually renaming his tiny nuke. Fun is stunned when the dragon unleashes its power to transform into a scarlet beauty in her human state. Wah, slow down, what happened there? Fun is stunned to see the human form of his new dragon. He inspects the stats and finds all of her skills unlocked. Dragon's inspiration is a strengthening skill that invigorates the user and the dragon pet, providing a boost in overall stats. Dragon Fang Strike is a high damage attack, whereas Dragon Claw can transform one's arms to unleash the damage of their dragon pet. These attributes are actually five or six times higher than those of an ordinary person despite the dragon's state as a hatchling. Fun finds himself shocked to observe her skills and thinks that he's got enough firepower to contest an expert human who is 20 levels higher than him. 
He also realizes that his bloodline connection to the dragon doubles all of his personal attributes, allowing him to be a stronger opponent. Bro basically enjoying those OP buffs yo. Fun is happy to have made full use of the hidden profession and also thinks that the dragon tamer is indeed the strongest hidden profession. However, his buff when pet dragon doesn't believe otherwise, as she behaves like a clueless and immature dragon. He settles on the name at last and calls her Shi Yao Ya. Fun wonders if the dragon is hungry and decides that they should hunt for some monsters to fill her appetite. He knows that he will be able to climb to the many academic ranks and institutions thanks to his newfound abilities. Fun and Xiao Ya race off to head deep into the Mount Shi Basin. Arriving at their location, they are met with an enormous horde of plains hyena, who are much stronger than the Grey Fox. Shi Yao Ya immediately takes the lead in excitement and charges ahead with a menacing speed. Fun thinks that he feels no danger from the mountain any longer, and Shi Yao prepares a magnificent dragon breath, using her skill to incinerate all of the hyenas in one strike. Fun wants to hunt the leap monsters and stares down the big guy waiting for them in the corner. Ha ha ha. And to think that he was a weak MC only a few moments ago. Emerging from the shadows, this beast is the cunning three-headed blood lion, who is an elite boss. Fun and Shi Yao prepare for battle while the opposing monster uses a warring ability to increase its stats. Then, they charge up a giant ball of flame, readying a lethal strike. Fun coordinates with Xiao to interrupt the skill charge up. Shi Yao changes into her draconic form and uses the mighty jaw assault to inflict damage on the boss, interrupting the attack speedily. Fun also uses this moment to attack with his dragon fang strike, instantly killing the beast with their synchronized attack. Ha! Not a duo more iconic than these two forces. Fun is glad to receive a bundle of XP points by defeating the elite monster, and the two of them level up. The treasure map system triggers at this moment and sends Fun another location for them to hunt. He wonders what exclusive item he'll be receiving this time and is excited to head into the hunt with Shi Yao. On a completely different yet deeper side of Mount Shi Basin, a group consisting of Sun Ga and other combat professionals are looking for a fortuitous realm that requires at least five people to activate. Unfortunately, they're missing a member, and Kai the Rowe thinks that their efforts are futile. Shin Chi Yu confesses that such realms appear for only 24 hours, so they don't have any time to waste by looking around for a final member. Sun Ga comforts Chin Chi Yu, who tells her that her abilities will allow her to enter one of the top 10 academies with flourishing opportunities. Suddenly, the group races in caution when they find Lu Fun passing by casually. Sun Ga thinks that a material hunter like Fun shouldn't be in such a place, but Chin Chi Yu steps ahead to handle the matter and introduces herself. She offers Fun 100,000 dragon coins for basically entering into the fortune's secret realm without doing anything else. Fun thinks it's a terrific deal for just an entrance, especially if it's an offer made by the Chin family. Remarkably, the richest in their city. Sun Ga also thinks that this is a rare opportunity as they begin hurrying up to enter. However, Fun poses his own conditions and wants to participate in accordance with the rules. Kai questions if he wants to participate in receiving the rewards based on performance, which is something that Fun confirms. Bro finesse the situation for those s rank rewards. Chin Shi Yu wonders where he's getting his confidence from and takes fun for a weaker person. She allows him to participate in a cooperative manner and also lets him take the 100,000 dragon coins for the sake of it. Fun keeps the identity of Shi Yao a secret in front of the strangers for little trouble and thinks that he will wait for her summon. Inside the fortune secret realm, Sun Ga questions if Fun has any equipment at all. Lu Fun immediately calls forth a legendary antler sword, a treasure he obtained from the map. Sun Ga praises him for his weapon quality and wonders if Fun is a newly transferred student of some kind, while Kai is still untrusting of him. The group is met with an attack by a horde of decaying zombies who are eager to devour them. Sun Ga and Xiao Jia, along with the rest of the combatants, effortlessly take care of the zombies with their strong team play, while Chin Chi Yu casts her Holy Light Star Rain skill to unleash an attack while at the same time healing her teammates, making up for a resourceful ability. She's from the hidden class of the Holy Light Mage and has proficient magic against zombies. Suddenly, an elite bunch of monsters begin approaching them. These are the bloodthirsty zombies who begin to surround Sun Ga and Xiao Jia at once. The two use their slashes to cut the zombies, except Xiao Jia finds his blade stuck in the monster's flesh. These zombies are capable of emitting corpse poison, causing a lasting effect on the aggressor. Not even Shin Chi Yu, as a Holy Light Mage, can help him in this situation. Dude, these are pretty broken zombies. Kev Jia is in a tight spot and begs for help, but even Sun Ga can't perform well against the elite zombies. Coming to their aid is the newcomer Lu Fun, who is more than ready to take down these zombies with his powers. 
Lu Fun effortlessly slices through the elite zombies, surprising the likes of Chin Chi with his skills. He tells them to march ahead while Sun Ga questions his level as a mere student. Fun states that he's just a level 14 student and came to the stone plane to practice for the great exam. That's how Chin Chi realizes that he's a student with the same year as her and doesn't know how Fun boasts more substantial firepower than Sun Ga, who is double in levels. Haha, <laughs> if only she knew about his legendary dragon. Another elite monster is about to attack Chin Chi Yu. And while Kai is trying to protect her, Fun blitzes her in speed and thrashes the zombie with his strike. After decimating the zombie, he tells the group that he'll be taking charge of their frontal attack. Chin Chi Yu accepts him as her classmate and wants Fun to lead the front with Sun Ga while they cover the rear. Lu Fun introduces his name for a moment and goes on ahead, leaving Chin Chi Yu to wonder if he's the rumored hidden class dragon tamer that recently appeared. She is at odds with his powers, defying that of the weakest class. After that, Lu Fun annihilates more bloodthirsty zombies and arrives at the center of the village of the Mystic Realm. He knows that Chin Chi Yu's healing cannot remove the corpse poison from Ji Yao's body and thinks that they should hurry because Ji Yao's time is fading with the spread of the poison. Kai wonders why there is no trace of the Mystic Realm Guardian in the village and realizes that something isn't right. Ji Ya collapses to the ground while Sun Ga and the rest bear witness to the horrifying monstrosity known as the Iron Skin Zombie. This beast is the Mystic Realm Guardian, also known as the Boss. Fun reflects that Ji Yao's corpse poison basically awakened such zombies, which means that they should defeat the monster quickly before it absorbs Ji Ya. Honestly, the Boss monster has such an epic design. Sun Gut charges up ahead but finds himself unable even to dent the zombie with his blade. Lu Fun also rushes right into battle, aiming to attack in rapid succession. The Iron Skin Zombie uniquely possesses a Steel Skin state, allowing for a significant increase in defense and endurance. Fun accounts for newer ways of attack, while the Elite Zombie rushes to attack Chin Chi Yu. Fun instructs Chin Chi Yu to use her holy spells and tells Sun Ga to guard Ji Yao with Kai. He then casts the use of his skill, Dragon Blood Armorization, to partly give himself a draconic body to strike the beast. With Chin Chi Yu's powers and his skill, they charge with full force and end up delivering a potent strike on the elite zombie.